are getting ready to start our first session and uh, you'll want to have your leader's guide, you'll want to have your couple's workbook, and you'll want to have your Bible. Those three things and uh, we'll get going here with the very first session, chapter one. And if you would turn in your leader's guide to page five and uh, you'll see that the first session is orientation. And the next thing you'll see is the purpose for this lesson. Uh, the purpose is to get acquainted with the couples, to introduce couples to the planning for successful marriage curriculum, and to encourage couples to view this as marriage discipleship. This is not a counseling session, this is discipleship. And then to put couples at ease and assure them that they uh, can feel free to participate. Uh, they can talk if they want, and if they don't feel comfortable doing that, they can listen. But uh, the, objection, the objective of this particular uh, lesson is to just kind of set the tone that this is going to be a comfortable, uh, informal situation. Now, we want to introduce ourselves to you. As you'll see, the next thing you do is you introduce your spouse uh, to the couples. And so this is my wife, Janine, and I am Tom. And um, it has been a, what we're teaching you, uh, it has Hi. been a real <laughs> blessing to, um, to share th these truths with each other. And we have seen God just answer so many prayers in our marriage. And, and having God as a vital part of our marriage has been so good. Um, as we have applied his word to our marriage, we have found that God's word is true. It, is all we work, it always works, and it is always there to help us and encourage us to be that husband and wife that we desire to be. Now, we want you to introduce each other, and Janine, uh, how are we going to handle that? Yes, now you'll look at your leader's guide again, because we're just going to go right through it, make it very easy for you. And you see that in introducing each other, uh, you'll do, each couple will introduce the other person. They're not going to introduce themselves first. They're going to give their spouse's name, or their intended spouse, uh, where they were born, what attracted you to him or her, and if money were no object, where in the world would you like to visit? And you will be so surprised when you start this with your class. It breaks the ice. Because we have discovered that a lot of wives tell us later on, you know, my husband didn't even want to come to these classes. And he said, okay, I'll come just one time the first night but don't plan on me coming anymore. And because of the way that he got to know people and how comfortable it was and getting to hear all these things about the other people in the class, that when we were ready for the next week, he said, what time was it we were supposed to be at that class? And there's nothing that have kept him at home. At this point, you want to move to number two on the bottom of page five, uh, Introduction to Ministries for Family Enrichment, uh, to give people an idea as to how uh, these truths are being taught around the world. And uh, one of the first things that we want to call your attention to is the logo. And Janine will explain a word about the logo. As you see the logo on your workbook, uh, we were just really excited back years ago when we started this ministry. We thought, we need a logo. And uh, one of the men that we were working with said, you know what, I have a, a person that works at Disneyland, an American Indian. And he said, uh, let me give this idea to her and tell her about your curriculum and see what she comes up with. This is what she came up with. You see, here's the father and the mother, and there's the two children. Now, here is the American Indian thinking. You see, here are roots, and they're going down into ministries for family enrichment to get their nourishment. And we thought, that will be our logo. So we had an American Indian do this for us, and we love it. And you'll see that, uh, that we're working in several countries, and the material has been translated into several languages. And then the next thing is number three, introduction to the sessions. And uh, you want to uh, invite the couples to turn in their couples workbook to uh, page two, and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, introduction to, uh, to the course. You want to read through that. Don't go into detail at this point. Um, you'll want to uh, emphasize, of course, the five major potential problem areas of marriage uh, because that'll be um, kind of woven throughout all of this curriculum. But uh, in this, uh, this particular, chap uh, particular part, you'll just want to simply read through it and introduce the, uh, uh, the sessions to, uh, to the people. And then have them turn to page four, uh, where uh, you see at the top of page seven in your leader's guide, uh, we have the scripture and opening prayer. Each lesson has scriptural principles. Each lesson is built on scriptural principles. And so for this uh, lesson, and actually for the entire course, we want to take a look at Psalm 127 and verse 1. And it reads, 
Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is useless. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. So from the very start, we want to emphasize that it is so important to have that understanding that it's God that is to build the house. And then uh, we will open in prayer. The content of the course. You see that's the next thing, uh, number five, presentation of the content of the course. And have your uh, couples turn to page three in their, in their workbook. And um, in doing this, they will read through, you'll simply read through uh, the various chapters, not going into detail. And I'm going to ask Janine if she would do that at this time, please. And you see where it says Planning for Successful Marriage Seminar Content. And if you read the first paragraph to the class, then you will share with them Chapter 1 is your orientation. And that's what you're going through right now. Chapter 2 is His and Hers and His. I am His, He is mine, and together we are His. Chapter 3 is Saying It with Love. And that has to do with communication. Chapter 4, God's Family Plan. And uh, people always say, family planning? We say, oh no, not family planning. God does have a plan for the family that most people do not know. And you're going to be you're just being able to instruct them beautifully in this. And then chapter 5 is God's Family Leaders. And that has to do with the husband and the wife. And what does God want them to do to lead this family? Chapter 6, Hit or Miss. Now this is something that you will find very few places and it's on goals, but the goals are marriage goals. And it's so hard to find any information on this at all. Everyone is so excited about this particular chapter. Then chapter seven, anybody see where the paycheck went? That's a big question in today's world. And the first chapter has to do with scriptural principles in handling our money. Then you'll see chapter 8, anybody see where the paycheck went, part 2. And that shows people how to budget, how to control their money instead of letting their money control them. We've got more couples out of debt with just this chapter. And then chapter 9, leave and cleave. And you can guess what that is, in-laws. And so we're going to be discussing what does it mean to leave and to cleave. And then chapter 10, it is very good. And this has to do with something that usually, even in the Christian community, is not talked about very often, but it's our sexual relationship and what God says about it. And then chapter 11, in the presence of God, uh, for those that aren't married yet, they're going to be going through some wedding vows to see what they're going to be promising to each other. For those that are married, they're going to have a big renewal. And this has been a surprise to some because many have forgotten their vows. Now, if you turn back to your leader's guide, uh, the middle of page 7, uh, where we have the three orientation questions. And you will notice uh, with this that we are asking for the, for the uh, class to participate. Throughout all of the chapters, we do this deliberately. Uh, we, it's interactive. It's not just straight lecturing. It's interactive. And so as, as often as you can, uh, you want to get uh, the students to interact with each other and with you and give their, their insights. And so this is a good point to introduce this idea. Uh, with the three orientation questions, number one is, uh, what is your definition of marriage? And so ask the couples to uh, break up into groups, two, three couples in a group, and have them uh, come up with a, with a definition of what is uh, marriage. And then after a few minutes, have them come back together again as a larger group and share their ideas. Now you will notice that in your workbook, uh, you have a suggestion uh, as to a definition that was prepared by Dr. Norman Wright. And it's a good definition. But you want to use this only after uh, the couples have had an opportunity first to give their, their input. And then secondly, uh, what is your definition of love? We all get married we, because we're in love, right? Well, different people have different ideas as to what love means. And so uh, you want to break them into their groups again, have them define what is love. And then after a few minutes, have them come back together again and then give to the larger class their ideas about love and how they define it. We have a good definition in here by Elizabeth Elliott, uh, the wife of a missionary. And uh, she says that love is commitment, and commitment is sacrifice, and sacrifice is inconvenience. Haven't you found that to be true? And so it's a good definition to share. And then, of course, we have 1 Corinthians 13, 
which is the, the, the hallmark uh, definition of what, um, what love is to be. And then number three, uh, on the top of page eight, what did you expect to learn from, what do you expect to learn from this course? And again, you want to break them into small groups and give them an opportunity to discuss uh, what it is that uh, they want to learn from the course. Listen carefully because uh, you're going to get a lot of good ideas uh, from them as to things that you need to uh, emphasize as you're going through these uh, chapters. Janine. And, you know, with this particular uh, question, uh, it, first I have to say that when you get answers like this and you find things as you're going along that they're talking to you about this, the classes, be sure and write them down because you'll want to use them at a later time. This is one of those illustrations that we have used in many, many places because at one particular time we had a man and a woman in one of our classes that were, that were premarital but they were in with a bunch of really young premaritals and they were older. So when that question came up, what do you expect to learn from this course? He raised his hand and he stood up and he said, well, I've been married and divorced three times. Um, my lovely second here has been divorced. And I would say that we would like to know how we can stay married the rest of our life. We like that. And so we wrote it down and we remembered it. And when you have, when you have people answer things like that, uh, you can share them with other people. Uh, we encourage you not to use names. Uh, you don't know who these people are. But, but write them down because you'll have lots of good illustrations from just what your class will tell you. And the good news about this couple is they have now been married many, many years and they have a wonderful marriage. They are really having a, a good time in their married life together because they are basing this marriage on godly principles. And then uh, you'll notice the next thing are the orientation thoughts. and um, The students are to turn to page 5 um, in their workbooks. Uh, just a reminder, um, as students are working in their workbooks, you want to make sure that they are taking notes, that they are writing things down because um, it will help them to remember uh, many of the things that are being discussed and many of the good definitions that they're going to be hearing. So uh, just um, from time to time remind them to be writing down um, the information in their in their workbooks. And the orientation thoughts, the first one you notice are expectations. Everybody comes into marriage with certain expectations, don't they? They, th they think, you know, when I marry this woman, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And the woman has ideas, you know, when I marry this man, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And too many times people have big surprises because what they thought was going to happen doesn't happen. Their expectations are not met. One of the big causes <laughs> of marital stress uh, are unfulfilled expectations. Uh, people just um, have not had their expectations met and they may hang in there for a year, two, three years. But when they, when they find out that their expectations are not going to be met, then they get uh, really serious in their disagreement with their spouse. So, it's good if premarital's can discuss this ahead of time, obviously. And uh, for married couples, it's good for them to get into that discussion with each other. And so break into small groups again and have, uh, have these groups discuss what are people's expectations in getting married? Why do they, you know, what do they expect to have happen when they get married? And so after they have done that, then have them come back and report uh, on what their um, answers are for that question. The second one are the reasons. We don't just marry the right person, but it's important that we marry for the right reasons. And uh, people have all kinds of reasons for getting married. And you're going to be surprised at some of the reasons why people get married. But then um, this is to help them discuss these things too. And so have them go into their small groups and discuss um, what are the reasons for people getting married? Why do people want to get married? And um, this can be very enlightening for them as they have a chance to reevaluate their own reasons. Uh, as to why they want to get married, um, if this is a premarital situation or if it's a married situation, they can revisit what were my reasons for getting married. And this is also a good opportunity for couples to discuss with each other what their expectations were and what their reasons were. And this is kind of, uh, this could be homework that they can work on uh, during the week. Now, one more thing on the bottom of page eight in your leader's guide, you'll see the um, uh, heading there, planning for a successful marriage library. Uh, important that people get all the resources that they can uh, for, uh, for their marriage. There's a lot of good books out there, a lot of good CDs, a lot of information that's out there. And just encourage couples to begin building 
a, a marriage library um, and, and getting resources that they can go back to and look over and, and discuss with each other. So you want to, to have that opportunity to share with them uh, the importance of uh, having a good library, something that will help them throughout the years. And, um, and have samples, have examples for them of things that you have found helpful that you can uh, share with them. Now, Janine's going to share with us uh, the importance uh, of assignments in this course. There is homework, and it's fun homework, and uh, it's things that um, couples will enjoy doing together. Now, you'll see right, right in the middle of your page where it says the importance of assignments in this course. And you can make this real casual because you don't want the class to feel that, oh my goodness, I'm going to have a lot of homework. Uh, just explain to them, as you can see right here in this first paragraph, that uh, in addition to the notes that they've been taking, as uh, they have uh, these expectations and reasons that they can go back over, and each session, as we you will see in the future, uh, we will be getting some ideas of things that they can talk over uh, that maybe they've never ever talked over just together as a couple. And it said that uh, you as a leader may want to develop a really neat series of questions for them. And then at each session, you could be able to just give them a, uh, even one question that they could take home with them to, to interact on during the week. Now, these are things that they would not be sharing back to the class or to you as a leader. Just let them know this would be very, very personal. And uh, an extra note there, if, um, you know, if they get stuck or if you get stuck uh, and coming together with questions that you can give to them. We do have uh, suggestions uh, for each chapter and you can contact us. Uh, you have our, our website uh, address and our email address and we would be happy to, uh, to share uh, some of these with you. You know, in conclusion, in concluding this, uh, we uh, want to take the opportunity uh, to congratulate you again for mm -hmm. uh, teaching this to people. And uh, as you're teaching them, you'll want to make yourself available to them um, if they have any questions uh, and sometimes people you know they, they have things that they are struggling with and the one rule of thumb that uh, is really important here is that uh, if it is a woman that wants personal uh, counsel um, the husband never meets with her alone it's always uh, I always meet with a woman with my wife there as well and the same with my wife if a man wants to talk to her I'm going to be there now if it's a couple that's no problem we can meet with them uh, together, but uh, you never want to have a situation where it's a man counseling a woman or a woman counseling a man, because that can lead into uh, some uh, some problems. Even though you don't intend for that to to happen. Also, remember this is not a therapy session. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, discipleship. Uh, it's an opportunity to get into God's Word and see what God's Word has to say about marriage and and family life. And um, if uh, this course is being used as a premarital course. Um, it's just a wonderful opportunity for couples to better prepare for marriage because you know that the five areas that we mentioned earlier, they are going to face those areas in their marriage. And it's great if they can have the biblical tools that will help them to, to deal with those, those areas ahead of time. Now, we will be praying for you and uh, as uh, you teach this to other people and encourage the people that uh, are in your class uh, by letting them know that you're going to be praying for them. Uh, as they go through this. And God's going to use you to, to just be a blessing to so many people. Again, we want you to uh, remember that this first session uh, is simply to kind of set the tone that um, it's going to be very casual, it's going to be very comfortable for people, it's not going to be lecture, it's going to be interactive, and people can uh, participate as they, as they desire to do so. Now, next chapter we'll be dealing with is his and hers and his. Janine mm -hmm. mentioned that. I'm She's his, and I'm hers, and together we are his. That's the next chapter, and we'll deal with that in the next segment.